Hey guys, it's Josh here from the Quick Speed Shop. I'm working on my C10 truck right now, doing some rust repair. I just wanted to go on here and do a quick video about my uh, Carlisle Truck Nationals rant video you might have seen. It kind of went viral for the channel here about getting uh, denied entry, or as I put it, thrown out of the Truck Nationals on Saturday with my Studebaker truck and companion trailer. And I just want to give an update, and there's been... I don't know, 400 and something comments back and forth. I got a whole bunch of hate and then some support. And I just wanted to like set the record straight real fast and say, uh, here's what we're doing. First thing I want to say, I'm not trying to ruin Carlisle for anybody. I'm not trying to, I don't have any ill will. I was, I was mad at the day, which is understandable, but I'm not trying to ruin Carlisle. I'm not calling for a boycott of Carlisle. I'm not saying go, you know, screw them guys. Never go to Carlisle again. Even though in the video I said I might not, Put a vehicle in the show again to deal with the nonsense but i'm going to go there to like spring or fall carlisle if i need parts i'm building my uh, daytona clone car i'm sure i'm going to go to the chrysler nationals at carlisle as a vent or as a uh, you know a walk-in customer and go to the swap meet like it's still one of the biggest areas to have a show that's somewhat close to my house five and a half hours away i'm not trying to put them out of business or like you know wreck their operation but you know, the scenario that happened to go back is I took my Studebaker truck with a companion Studebaker trailer. I read the rules before I left that said, like, no trucks and trailers that I took it to read, read it as if you took your show truck on a truck and trailer, like, a, you know, you had your new Ford diesel towing a 20-foot car trailer with your, you know, 56 F100 on the back. I can see where they don't want the truck and the tow trailer in the show. You know, you unload it in the auxiliary lot, which I saw the trucks and trailers in the auxiliary lot, and then you drive your show truck into the show. I completely get that. That's not what I was doing. I specifically took a companion trailer, or show trailer, if you want to call it, behind my Studebaker truck, all the way down to the show for a couple of reasons. One, it's a neat display. I can guarantee you nobody was at the Truck Nationals that year or probably any year, with a M-Series Studebaker truck with an M-Series Studebaker trailer. I can guarantee it. I was in R100, which if you're familiar with Carlisle, you come in gate three, go straight, and just past the uh, where like the bathrooms are in that black building where the hose is for car washes, uh, right on the corner is where the R100 spot was. So it was like pre-49 like street rod style trucks. And they had it blocked off, I don't know, 40 spaces or so we'll call it. There was, on Friday, there was two trucks there. My truck and a 48 F1. So, if you watch the video, there was hundreds and hundreds of feet around our two trucks in that spot. Plenty of room. I had my truck and trailer there, which wasn't any longer. My little Studebaker truck is like the size of an S10, pretty much. And that little half trailer, it wasn't any longer than like a crew cab F350 and that show appears to be, to me, mostly newer trucks, like lifted trucks, 4x4s, big trucks. They have a whole big rig display there. You know, everything there was bigger than my truck, pretty much. So Friday we go down. We had some overheating issues. If you watch the video, at the end of the video, after the ramp part of it, it turns out the thermostat, which, do I have it here? I don't, but the thermostat had some debris stuck in it. This truck has been... I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So it had some debris stuck in the thermostat, which caused it intermittent overheating issues, which we had on, on the way down Friday. It was also very hot out that weekend, 90 plus degrees out. So on the way down, I attributed that to maybe, you know, with a 90 plus degree heat and high humidity index and everything, we we're pulling a trailer uphill, running 70 miles an hour. I've got a tired old AMC straight six in that truck that, uh, has been in there since 2006. I got a lot of hate from people saying the truck wasn't roadworthy, the truck was a piece of junk pretty much. Like, I don't know what I'm doing building the vehicles. Like, I should have not taken it there knowing it was, you know, not roadworthy. Well, the truck's been on the road since 1999. That's, all, that's over 25 years. That specific engine and radiator and thermostat has been in the truck since 2006 when I put it in there, and it's probably driven 25,000 miles since I put that drivetrain in there. Back in May, that truck towed my dragster, which is a lot heavier, probably 2,000 pounds with the trailer, uh, with the bigger trailer, all the way out to Cleveland for three and a half, four hours on the highway with, with no trailer brakes, so just relying on the truck brakes, pulling that trailer. We drove all the way out there 
and all the way back, no problems. The thing didn't overheat. It, you know, it stopped. It wasn't, the brakes didn't fail or nothing. Everything was fine. So I went on that big trip with the thing with Ted. I've driven the truck to work. It's a daily driver. Like I said, it's been on the road for almost 30 years. It's got 35,000 miles on it, 25 plus on the drivetrain that's in it now. So anybody says, oh, the truck, you know, you shouldn't have taken it overheating, this and that. It all did that on the weekend of that show. It didn't, obviously, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to take a truck when it's 90 degrees out, five and a half hours away, if it doesn't run cool in traffic. Like, I'm, I'm not an idiot. I would have taken my Ford van, which runs cool, just did the power tour, which was way hotter for a whole, you know, 2,300 miles. I would have taken my van to the Truck Nationals because they had a big van display. I wanted to be different and take my Studebaker truck and my Studebaker trailer because people would enjoy it. And guess what? On Friday, a lot of people enjoyed it. There wasn't, you know, everybody came by and saw it. So number two, I get the people say, well, you should have read the rules and blah, 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 blah. I did. And like I said, I don't think it applied to a, a, a show trailer where you show a vehicle. I think it applied to a tow rig, and that's how I read it. Now, I was in the show all day Friday. If you watch the first part of the video, we had the truck in the trailer in the tent set up. We were there in the rain. Guess what? On that corner, in the rain and during the day, numerous Carlisle events uh, staff drove up in golf carts and parked in there because there was only two trucks in our spot. So there's plenty of lawn area for them. They used it. They could see the gate. So they like, oh, this is perfect. So one after another, golf carts was show people came and parked, you know, all day long. Not one of those people that worked there said, hey, why is this trailer in here? You can't have a trailer in here. Nobody said anything. And some of them looked at it and liked it. Everybody went by looked at it and liked it. Nobody said a word like, hey, trailers aren't allowed in the show. Why is this trailer here? Nobody said a word. We were there all day Friday. We were there till like almost 7 o'clock at night Friday. Nobody said nothing. So we get we get to uh, Friday night. I go home, and that's in the video where I make the fan shroud out of the uh, fluorescent light fixture. Get up Saturday morning. It's, it's a little cooler out, but still pretty hot, you know, 80-ish. Ted and I drive to the show. The truck runs at 175, 180 all the way to the show. We get into the traffic jam at gate three, which Friday we drove right in. I would assume that most of the people that went to the show would have been there on Friday, especially because it was going to rain on Saturday. seems like most of them would have gone Friday. I don't know what the scenario was with the traffic jam, but it was gridlock. We got there, I want to say 9 o'clock-ish. It took over an hour. That's the part where I had the doors open. And this is the part where multiple people said, you know, used Google and said, hey, brake fluid doesn't boil until 400 degrees. There's no way your brakes failed from getting hot. Well, let's think about this. And I answered this 15 times in the comments because nobody, make, nobody reads the comments, obviously. Uh, yeah, brake fluid might boil at 400 degrees. Sure. Guess what? The truck was at 230, 240 degrees. What's the exhaust run at? Probably 500 degrees, 600 degrees. I don't know what it was. The exhaust comes down the truck near the brake lines and stuff. So you're sitting in traffic with, you know, I don't know, 200 other trucks that are all running at 200 something degrees. It's like 85 to 90 degrees out of this time. There's no air movement. The asphalt under all these cars is hot. You could see the heat boiling out of all the trucks, you know, when you look through the air. The whole thing was a heated mess. So you've got hot exhaust, no air moving by it. Super hot engine, no air moved by it. Asphalt radiating heat above it, like heat trapped under the hood. My hood was so hot, Ted was walking alongside because he had to get out of the truck. He put his hand on the hood. He just about burned his hand on the hood. That truck was extremely hot under the hood, you know. So it didn't like boil the brake fluid away to like it's gone, but you know, there was no other explanation for all of a sudden the brake pedal after an hour in that extreme heat, the brake pedal going to the floor. And as soon as the truck went in, or as soon as we, as soon as we left and it got some air movement and the, and the fluid cooled down, the brakes worked fine. And guess what? They've been flying ever since. So, you know, the only thing that caused the brakes to fail was the extreme temperature. And I'll put it this way in quotation marks so everybody doesn't get bent out of shape about the 400 degrees. It boiled the brake fluid. It lost its hydraulic compression, you know, wasn't moisture in it? I don't know. Who knows? Like, it, I don't think the, the brakes work fine the rest of the time. You know, like I said, I've driven the truck. Yeah, so there's moisture in there that boiled, whatever. It doesn't matter what boiled. The fact is 
the heat boiled the brake fluid and the pedal went to the floor on the front brakes, which gave, I had barely, you know, a little bit of back brake, but hardly any brakes, and it caught me off guard, and that's what that's about. So, uh, part three, or number three, we get up to the gate. I had obviously registered. I paid the $70 to get in, you know, weeks ago, or uh, not enough to do early registration, so I paid the $70, whatever it is, to get in. You know, it doesn't, it's not free to go to these events. It's five and a half hours away. The truck gets like pulling that trailer probably 11, 12 miles a gallon, right? So I bet I spent $200 on fuel. The trailer I just dragged out, I had to uh, repaint the trailer and I put brand new tires on it so we wouldn't have a blowout. Multiple people said, you weren't prepared for this trip. Well, I was, I packed the bearings on a the trailer. There's actually a video on the trailer of me restoring the trailer, right? Literally right here. Painting the trailer, packing the wheel bearings on the trailer, putting new tires on the trailer, checking the lights on the trailer, making the trailer roadworthy. The truck, I checked all the fluids, everything is good. I filled up a gas, I made sure it had coolant in it, it had oil in it, everything is good to go. Plus, the truck is never ever overheated before. And actually, the aluminum radiator that's in it runs cool, so cool in fact that in the early uh, spring and late fall, it runs so cool I have a, uh, a a plate I hang in front of the radiator with a louvered, a louvered panel to restrict the airflow because the thing would run like at 130 degrees and it was just too cool. So the truck has never ever run hot except right then when they got that debris in the thermostat. And if you go to the end of the video, you'll see when we took the thermostat out, it had debris stuck in that high flow thermostat. That is what it is. Uh, number four, another reason I took the trailer there besides the display is I went to the swap meet to buy parts for this truck or well, the other truck, but this truck. I needed a hood, rear fenders, step side fenders. I was looking for a tailgate. I got a core support, like actually bought two hoods, all that stuff. You know, I'm like, this will be perfect. I'll have my truck with a tonneau cover. We can put our, our, our uh, luggage and stuff in there and coolers. We can put all the parts in the trailer. That's another reason I brought the trailer because I went to the swap meet. I spent over $800 in the swap meet on Friday. We spent money on food. I would have spent another, like, whatever on the swap meet on Saturday. I went there to support the show, to support Carlisle. If you go back in the channel or site, search on the channel, just type in Carlisle. I've done spring Carlisle events. We went there in, I think, 2021, um, the first the first spring Carlisle back after uh, the pandemic or whatever it was when it was open. We've been to the four nationals multiple times. We've been to, uh, I've been to... Um, other shows at Carlisle. I've been going to Carlisle for probably 15, 20 years. I'm not trying to hurt Carlisle, but you know, I was very upset after spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars to come down. I was going to film a whole video about it. Buy parts there. I came to do business and you know, everybody wins when I'm there and anybody else is there. When vendors are there and when participants are there, if everybody comes there and does what they want, everybody makes out because everybody sells stuff. Everybody makes money. The food vendors make money. Carlisle makes money. People get to see your truck. I get to make a video. I get to buy stuff I need. Everybody wins. When you don't win, and this is directed at Carlisle, when you don't win is when you have the guy at the gate say, hey, I see your sticker in the window. You can't bring that trailer in here. You got to leave it outside. After I spent an hour boiling over in your in your traffic jam because you didn't have good enough traffic control for whatever reason it isn't like it's the first show at carlisle right to say hey you can't bring that in here to which i responded what are you talking about i was literally in here all day yesterday with this trailer he's like nope can't bring it in here got to leave it outside so what do you want me to do drive outside unload my trailer leave my vintage trailer in the parking lot with no tongue lock or nothing because I didn't plan on leaving it there. Leave all the parts in it that I had already bought and uh, get back in line for another hour to come into the show because you said I can't bring this little trailer in that like, by the way, every single, just about every single semi that was in the show had a 50 foot tra 53 foot trailer on it, bro. The Truck Nationals isn't that big a Carlisle. The swap meets like a third of the size that the swap meet is at the Ford Nationals. The, most of that was taken up by semis. The car corral was like, I don't know, 20 trucks. It was freaking super small. They had the van display under the over, under the pavilion, which I really wanted to see. Uh, missed that. Um, you know, all the food is like $80 million, $80 million. Bought food like multiple times on Friday. Went, like I said, and spent all the money in the swap meet. Like, 
you know, I could have argued with a guy, but the truck was running at 240 degrees right there. I, I, could, I shut it off. I never would have got it started without it, let it so cool down. You know, people are still waiting in line behind me to get in. They've been in line for an hour overheating. And what do you want me to do, stand there and have an hour-long argument with some idiot at the gate and piss everybody else off? The, the best thing I could do in that situation was tell Ted to get in the truck and let's, let's leave. Let's just leave. And we, we went. Back to my friend Bob's house, worked on a truck. We went to uh, CJ Pony Parts in Harrisburg where I bought uh, a front bumper, a rear fender, and spent like $900-ish with tax at CJ Pony Parts that I probably could have spent in the swap meet with the swap meet vendors at Carlisle. So, you know, they missed out and, you know, whatever is what is, I guess CP CJ Pony Parts made out, I guess. But in my mind... You know, I've, I've had people in the comments accuse me of uh, not not reading the rules, trying to get away with something, like making this video to hurt Carlisle, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, like I said multiple times already, I went down there with my friends to enjoy Carlisle, to support Carlisle, to film a video at Carlisle, which supports Carlisle, to support the vendors and have a good weekend hanging out at my friend's house with and bring a neat truck that people, just, people would want to see and that's something that they wouldn't see down there. And... You know, unfortunately, it took one guy to ruin all that. You know, right, wrong, or indifferent. Maybe, you know, obviously he interpreted the rules differently. But if I was running an event, you know, I get you can't have fl flagrant real rule breakers. If I bring in 15 show trucks and trailers and just leave my trailers parked in the middle of the show, I, I get what they're talking about. That's not what I was doing. I was bringing a vintage truck to the R100 class that had two trucks in it on Friday. So let's say it had 20 trucks in it on Saturday. There was still would have been plenty of room for my little trailer. Like I said, the truck and trailer wasn't any longer than any of the crew cab long box trucks that were there by the hundreds at that show. So to wrap it up, hey bro, no hard feelings here. I don't hate Carlisle. I don't want people to boycott Carlisle. I don't want people to send letters to Carlisle. I don't want to car cause Carlisle any grief. There is some fallout from this video, and I guess they're aware of it. But it, it is what it is, and unfortunately it happened what it happened. And I made a video about it. I One of my things I do is have to make videos, and I couldn't just stop the video in the middle. Who's here? So I forget where I was, so let's wrap this up by saying here, here's the takeaways. Uh, don't have anything against Carlisle. Not trying to hurt Carlisle's, Carlisle's business. Not trying to put him out of business. Don't want people boycotting him. Just made the video about my situation. Uh, went down there to have fun. Make a video like I have multiple times before about Carlisle and the, and the trip and the show. And unfortunately the dude at the gate on Saturday caused me to have other things. Plus the overheating, which isn't Carlisle's fault. It's you know my truck having a mechanical issue, which is nobody's fault. But we able to persevere. But the... Uh, Things that Carlisle could work on, you know, if you're in the show on Friday and all the people that work there come by and see something that shouldn't be in there, say something on Friday so you don't sit in line for an hour on Saturday, but I believe I was in the correct because the rules, I don't think, say you can't bring a companion trailer. Um, I didn't want to hold anybody up. The overheating, they need better traffic control at the gate. Uh, overall... Like I said, they've got a big show all summer. They do big shows, and that's, you know, a place to get stuff. So I went down there to get stuff, and is what it is. So please don't uh, attack Carlisle in my name. I don't need to do that. This video I did, I said my piece in my video, and it's got plenty of views. So I'm sure that they've seen it, and it is what it is. And uh, we'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. I've got to go back and work in this truck. I don't know if it'll be at the Truck Nationals, but I'll probably go down and look for parts again. Anyways, thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.